Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, July 12th, and it is a beautiful day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. The rains have subsided. It's not too hot, but it is going to get up to 87. So I'm planning on uh, pretty much taking a day off today. I'm going to, going to enjoy some of this beautiful weather and uh, see what Sunday holds for me. So, let's see. Today I've got this guy here. This is a... Gosh, I... I don't even remember. I think it's a big boy. Uh, put on the glasses to make sure. Yeah, big boy made in the USA. Uh, imported briar. 229. Uh, these were sold by, if I remember right, uh, Tinderbox. And I had one when I first met my wife. Uh, it was one of my favorite pipes was a Meerschaum lined, pretty much in this shape, but it was uh, black. Uh, if I remember right, it was lightly rusticated, like one of the wire brush rustications. And I really loved that pipe, and I, I only at the time had like maybe three or four pipes. So, you know, it was it was a big part of my pipe smoking life, and it was stolen. It, well, the pipe wasn't stolen. It was in a jacket that was in the back seat of my wife's car while we were going into a store or something and when we came back out the jacket was gone and they got this they got a well not this but they, they got that pipe they got a pouch of tobacco and uh, God if anybody remembers a Walkman I actually had a little cassette playing Walkman with me uh, that they took now th this um, pipe was bought for me by my wife as a replacement for that and it's not a replacement I mean it's, it's actually quite different uh, doesn't have the Meerschaum lining, but I, you know, have always valued this pipe greatly because uh, it was a gift from her, and it was actually the first pipe she ever bought for me. Uh, problem with this pipe is that it likes to have the tenon break. Uh, I don't know why. I think it's just the length of the darn thing, and it's the way I handle it. Uh, but this is the third stem that I put on this pipe, and I'll be honest with you, I was not very good at putting stems on at the time. <laughs> Uh, this was very early days for me, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but this is a terrible job. This is a uh, pre-made, pre-molded stem. Uh, you can see I did not do a very good job of matching the the shank. It's kind of um, divoted in there. Uh, it's not light tight. It does fit, uh, although the tenon's not pretty, and I won't show it to you. And the, this, I just smoothed it. I didn't really shape it, and it's it's very uncomfortable. Someday I'm going to make a good. Uh, a good stem for this. You can hear it whistles a bit. I probably didn't even funnel it. But, nevertheless, it has great sentimental value, and that's what I'm going to smoke today. And it's a nice big bowl, billiard. And what I'm going to smoke is some of this, and you don't have this. So this is, um, you remember I talked about Cornell and Deal Yorktown uh, a month or so ago. And I really enjoyed Yorktown, but I said that, you know, I'd like it if it just had a bit of Perique in it. So I put a bit of, bit of Perique in it, and I'll tell you exactly what I did. It's Yorktown with 15% Perique and 5%, is that 5%? It's a, yeah, I think it's 5% Black Cavendish. So the Perique 15% is... is I like 15%. I like a, a lot of Perique, and that's that's a fairly high percentage. And the Black Cavendish is just sort of magic. It just kind of smooths things out and helps the uh, the flavors meld, in my opinion. So I'm going to load up the pipe with some of this. I have smoked it once about a week ago and enjoyed it. But let's see how it's, how it's faring. Did I manage to put a date on the jar? That would have been smart. I don't remember when I... No, I didn't. It has to have been three, maybe four weeks since I blended this. But I unfortunately didn't bother to date the jar. Oh, well. And yeah, it's not that there was anything wrong with Yorktown as a straight Virginia. It was wonderful. I, I really liked it, but I just prefer Virginia Perique. So we'll experiment with it. See what we get. Uh, now, I was in that Cornell and Deal series. I had three blends picked out. It 
we can really hear that whistle. I had three blends picked out, so Yorktown was probably the, the best one out of the three, I, I'll say. Uh, the other one that I did a um, impressions video on was Bradyville, which I, I did enjoy. Mild aromatic, um, good aromatic, for, you know, from my perspective. The third one was, I believe, called Shelbyton. Um, I smoked through an ounce of that stuff, and or close to an ounce. I probably have uh, a couple of balls left because I was going to do a video on it. And I got to be honest with you guys, I don't have anything good to say about Shelbyton. I just I couldn't get very much flavor out of it. Uh, it burned nicely. That's about all that I could say about it. It just wasn't, there was nothing there. And maybe, maybe that, I'm sure it's just me, you know, because they sell it. But for me, it, it just was not a, an enjoyable smoke. And I, 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 I struggled with it because I really wanted to make a video about it. But I honestly just couldn't find anything to say other than it packs nicely and it burns well. So I won't be doing that video. This is this is nice. The perique is is very very evident. Uh, that deep sweetness that the Yorktown has is still there. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of spice on the retro hill. If you like Yorktown and you're into Virginia Periques, get yourself some blending Perique. I, I use the Cornell and Deal granulated because it blends easily. And give it a try. I mean, you don't have to do a lot. This was, what did I have here? I had about 10 grams of Yorktown left, so, you know, you don't need to have a, a massive amount of tobacco to do it. You don't have to do pounds of tobacco. You can, you can just play with it. Um, and the real trick is to mix it well and to let it, let it sit for a while. You know, give it at least two weeks before you test it. Now, you could argue there's a lot of good vapors out there. Why would I make one? Well, yeah, there are, but it's fun. <laughs> it's just fun. And I've done this with quite a few tobaccos, and I've enjoyed them. And I've learned things about the different components that way. You know, I've trained my palate to detect things. I've never come up with a blend that I felt was uh, something I would you know, make an everyday smoke or even make a lot of. It's ju it's usually just a one-time thing, but it's an enjoyable uh, part of pipe smoking. So we had a great chat on Friday. Uh, we had uh, Daniel Tobias on Conversation with Pipe Smoking. Daniel is a Israeli uh, sheep farmer and pipe smoker, and it was just a lot of fun. We, we, we talked about uh, some pretty far-ranging topics. He was, he was fantastic. He just kind of took over, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but he just started reading the chat and responding directly to the folks in the chat. At one point, I thought to myself, boy, I could, I could just walk away from this, and as long as the phone is plugged in and the microphone's plugged in, Daniel could just run the show. It was, it was great. I really enjoyed it, and I'll put a link below. Please, if you haven't seen it, uh, it it's worth a watch. Uh, skip through the boring parts where it's just me talking. You can get to Daniel, and uh, it, it was it was really a lot of fun. So this Saturday, I'm going to do a giveaway live stream, four o'clock. Um, 
Saturday. I'm sorry I don't have the date. Let's see. I think it would be July 18th. Uh, and I usually do that. I will do that at 4 p.m. And I'll put up a... I was going to say a warning, but <laughs> that's not right. I forget what they call the... Uh, you know, the, the notification that goes out for live streams. I'll, I'll get one of those out later this week. I don't know what the thing is that I'm going to give away yet. I'll announce that on Wednesday. Um, and I'm thinking about possibly making the trivia a little bit more interesting and a little bit more um, competitive. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'm thinking about doing that. We had some fun on, uh, it was back on July 3rd, I think it was, uh, we had a, yeah, it was the Friday night uh, virtual pipe club, July 3rd, and I did uh, 4th of July trivia, and that was, that was kind of fun. Some of you guys are pretty sharp when it comes to, uh, to trivia, or certainly when it comes to history. That made it very enjoyable. You know, lots of lots of conversation about the questions and you know, the historical events and all that. Because a lot of the Fourth of July trivia was obviously uh, related to U.S. history. Although there was a fair amount about fireworks and hot dogs too. Did you know the first Fourth of July actually was celebrated with fireworks? I thought that was pretty darn fascinating. So let's see, in terms of other news, um, shops humming along, uh, getting a lot of work done. Oh, I know what I wanted to tell you. I told you last time about my visitor, the the uh, spider. and. You know, we we kind of we kind of reached a, a treaty of sorts, and I was happy with that. But he was still coming around. <laughs> and what would bother me most about him wasn't that he came around, but you know, I'd, I'd see him over there, I'd think, okay, the spider's over there. And then a few minutes later, he wasn't, and that bothered me more because I didn't know where he was, and I was you know convinced he was going to come crawling up my leg or something. So. You, you guys are going to laugh at me for this, but I bought some Stay Away Spider. <laughs> these are these little uh, packets that you hang up, and they're they're smelly. The uh, rosemary oil is one of the, the primary things in it, but it also has some lemon something or the other, and they don't smell bad. Uh, it's actually a nice kind of um, change from the pipe smoke <laughs> the smell that's normally down here uh, so I just opened one of those up and uh, tacked it to the bench uh, down low to the floor and haven't seen them since so stay away spiders seem to work this company it's called Earthkind uh, they have a whole range of these sorts of things. And back when we first moved into this house, and this is this is going back quite a ways. Well, it wasn't when we first moved in. It was probably about five years after. Um, we had a problem with uh, mice, uh, and and you know we live in an area where there's a lot of farms and stuff, so mice are a, a sort of a fact of life here. But you you don't want them in the house, and we uh, we tried all sorts of things, and you know we we're trapping them, we we're live trapping them. We had uh, exterminators come in and, and put up uh, the poison things that I really don't like, especially since I have dogs. I, I just really don't like having those around. Uh, so I, I sealed up all the cracks I could find, and, and that actually helped a lot. But before I got around to doing that, I bought some of these. I think it was Earthkind, and they have a rodent version of and I hung a couple of them here in the basement. I hung a couple of them in the garage, which were the main areas where we were having trouble. 
and they worked. They they actually worked really well. So I was I was impressed by that. Uh, you know, it's just a scent that the animal, for whatever reason, doesn't like, and they you know stay away. Now the problem is when it gets cold, that's not enough because they need to they need to get warm to live. So they'll they'll put up with a smell they don't like unless it's something really aversive. Uh, what ultimately fixed the problem was I got that uh, foam uh, insulation spray and I went around and anywhere where, and there was a surprising number of places where you could see daylight uh, if you looked hard enough for them. So any, anywhere where I found that sort of a thing I, I, I filled it up with that foam insulation and then I bought a uh, skirting strip for the bottom of my garage door so that when it closes this strip you know really seals it very well and that that fixed it we we haven't had a problem since so you know the the the, the message there is that you know when you have those problems it's easy to immediately resort to the to the poisons and the traps and things like that which are all well and good you know you, your house and they're mice so kill them if you want but there are probably better ways to do it because you know it's like I told my wife when she was doing the, the, the poison she she was a proponent of the poison things from the exterminator and I wasn't and I said well you know all you're doing is you're killing the local mice but there's mice all over and they're gonna come in and fill that void so you're gonna be for the rest of your life <laughs> just killing mice and and there's better ways to do it you know you can you can prevent them from coming in. You can make uh, areas in your your outdoor areas that are attractive to them to go to rather than come into your house. Uh, so th there are things you can do. So how about that? You get you get tobacco blending and pest control all in the same video. Uh, I think I was talking about the shop. Yeah, things are going well. I've got a challenging project right now. I'm, I'm not videoing it just because I don't really uh, know where, where, which way it's going right now, but I'm trying to do a church warden stem from scratch. And I've done short church warden stems from scratch, but the really long ones I typically will... Uh, that That's the one case where I think a pre-molded blank is is useful and you know I do a lot of work on that blank I redrill it I funnel it I shape the outside I shape the button so you know it's there's not a there's not a spot on that blank where the original ebonite surface is still there so it's it's you know if it would be just as uh, I would be just as happy if I could buy a pre-drilled piece of ebonite just a rod of ebonite that was drilled because that's the challenge getting that long airway drilled accurately and this is an eight inch stem so it's it's becoming quite a challenge because my my lathe is only uh, 17 inch I think and I just can't there's not enough room on the lathe to put the the ebonite rod the drill that's going to go into the ebonite rod and then the uh, the chuck to hold the drill and the tailstock and of course the chuck to hold the ebonite rod there's just not enough room for that, so um, I had to use the drill press, and so far it has not been successful. So we'll keep working on it. We'll we'll get it sorted. But uh, that's that's been that's been uh, occupying a lot of my my shop time. Uh, today I'm I'm going to take the day off, like I said, but I think tonight I'm going to just do some cleanup because it's a bit of a mess. I've been working on a lot of stuff and just haven't taken the time to clean up in a while. I probably said that last week and probably the week before as well, but I'm really going to do it today. You can hold me to that. Well, folks, I don't want to take up too much more of your, your Sunday, especially if you're having this beautiful weather that we're having. I'm looking out the window right now at the sun streaming in and wishing I was out there. So you all have a fantastic Sunday and a great week ahead. I'll see you Wednesday, and don't forget, next Saturday is uh, going to be the live stream giveaway, so keep an eye out for the notification. Y'all take care, and until we uh, speak again, I look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.